Welcome back to my channel, Match of Armin. Uh, this is another video on factoring cubic uh, polynomials. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to show you another approach to factorizing cubic polynomials. In this video here, I'm going to use the factor theorem only. Uh, please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, Match of Armin, please subscribe. And I hope you will enjoy this video. So let's start. Video. I'm going to show how to find three rational factors of the cubics. First of all, the basic one, x cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, with a leading coefficient of 1 first. Let's start that one. And then we're going to do the general one, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d, where the leading coefficient is not necessarily a 1. And here, I'm only going to make use of the factor theorem. Briefly go over the factor theorem. If f a is equal to 0, then x minus a would then be a factor of the polynomial fx. For example, if you have f negative 2 and you determine the value 0, then x plus 2 would then be a factor of the polynomial. So if negative 2, if you substitute negative 2 and you obtain a 0, that would indicate that x plus 2 would be a factor. Conversely stated, if x minus a again is a factor of a polynomial, then f a would be equal to 0. That's just the converse. What does this mean? If x minus 3 is a factor of fx, you see there I've got a minus 3, then f plus 3 value would be 0. So we're basically going to use this. Whenever you do a substitution in your polynomial and you end up with a value of 0, you obtain a factor, right? So if you substituted negative 2, then your factor would be x plus 2. If you substitute the positive 1, then your factor would be x minus 1, etc. Uh, factors of a number. If I, for example, want the factors of 8, what do we mean by the factors of 8? Those are all the numbers that can divide exactly into 8. So the first one there would be either a plus or a minus 1, or a plus or a minus 2, or a plus or a minus 4, or a plus or a minus 8. Right? Factors of 12, again, the first one would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 6 as well as plus or minus 12. Factors of 8, 15, the first one would be plus or minus 1. Now the next one would be plus or minus 3, and then the next one plus or minus 5, and then plus or minus 15. And the factors of 18, let's try this as well. So the first one we'll always consider is the plus or minus 1. Then I take an even number, plus or minus 2, then I take a plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 9, or plus or minus 18. So it's important that you know how what, what the factors of a constant number is. Show you how we can factorize cubics of the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And here we're going to use the factor theorem only. Cubic uh, 1, we're going to take, would have three distinct factors. What do we mean by distinct? It means three different factors. Right? And here we're going to have work with rational factors only. Uh, and I'm taking an example where the leading coefficient is 1. What does that mean? It means that the coefficient of x cubed is a 1. Let's take this example. We have all positive terms here x cubed plus 7x squared plus 14x plus 8. So let's just see what the approach should be. There's two steps that we're going to need. First step, we're going to find two factors using the factor theorem. Then after you have the two factors, then we need to find the third factor. And the third factor we can easily find by means of inspection. So let's see. Step one, you want to find two factors. So first of all, we have to see what are the possible factors that we have. Because we have a 8, the possible factors are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 8. Let's start with the smaller one. Let's substitute f1 into the expression. If 
I substitute F1 to the expression, I see that I do not get an answer of 0. In fact, I get 1 plus 7, which is 8. 8 plus 14, which is 22. I get 20. It's not 0. I just want to get a 0. I'm not interested in any other number but a 0. Let's substitute negative 1. And indeed, if we substitute negative 1, we will get a 0. So what does this uh, imply? If f negative 1 is 0, it means x plus 1 is a factor. Now we've got one factor. We need to find another one. So after we use the 1, let's try the plus 2. And when we substitute positive 2, we don't get a 0. Let's substitute negative 2, and we do get a 0. Okay? Substitute negative in there, we get a 0. And because we get a 0, we can now deduce if f negative 2 is 0, then x plus 2 is a factor. So now we've found two of our factors already. We've got the first factor, x plus 1, and we've got the second factor, x plus 2. We want to find the third factor. Now, the third factor we can easily find by inspection. This is what I mean by inspection. We want to find, so it will also be a factor in x. So I look at my constant, which is 8. I already have a 1 and a 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times what will give me the 8? That's correct, 4. In other words, my third factor is x plus. You don't have to use the factor theorem again. Just a simple inspection, you can find the third factor. We just check with our factorization is correct. This we can easily do by just taking the coefficients. So it's 1 plus 7 plus 14 plus 8, and that gives me a total of 30. And if I substitute into my factors, I get 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 4, and I also get a 30. So these, in fact, are the correct factors for the cubic expression there. Just briefly go over. First of all, we have to find two factors using the factor theorem. And then we can find our third factor by means of inspection. For example, we have the um, cubic expression x cubed plus 6x squared minus x minus 30. And we have a constant there of negative 30. So we want to factorize that. So the first step would be, that's right, we find two factors using the factor theorem. And once we find the two factors, we will then determine the third factor by means of inspection. Step one. So I've got the factors of 30, and they are all the factors of 30. From plus or minus 1 right up to plus or minus 30. So let's start substituting F1. See, it's substitute it we find out it's not zero f negative one we also substitute no zero substituting two into my expression then i get a zero so my first factor i obtain is x minus two you have a positive two your factor is x minus two now let's try f3 also no zero and if i try f negative three there i get a zero so now i've got x plus three from f negative three implies x plus 3 is a factor. So now I can get my two factors. There's my first factor. My second factor is x plus 3. And I want to find my third factor, which we'll do by inspection. How do we do the inspection? We need to use that negative 30. And we already have a negative 2 and a 3. Negative 2 times positive 3 times what will give me negative 30. That's correct. That will be positive 5. So my third factor is x plus 5. We can just verify whether this is correct. So we have 1 plus 6 minus 1 minus 30 gives me negative 24. Substitute into factors 1 minus 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1 plus 5 also gives me negative 24. So those are the correct factors of the polynomial. And in this example here, we've got a co constant of negative 20, but here we have the coefficient of x cubed is not a 1. So we've got a number here, not a 1. So I've got 2x cubed. Let's see how we factorize this. We're going to follow the same approach. The first step would be finding two factors using the factor theorem. Step 2, we're going to get the third factor by means of inspection. First of all, we need to make sure that we know our factors of the 20. 
Those are all the points. You see, there's quite a lot. And only three of them will work. Plus or minus one, plus or minus two. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six times two. There are 12 possible factors, but only three of them will be applicable. So if I substitute F1, oh, there we get a zero immediately. So X minus one is a factor. If I substitute F negative one, doesn't work. F positive two or F negative two. The next one that we try is F four, also not working. But if I try F negative four, it gives me a zero. So that implies X plus four is a factor. So now I've got my two factors. X minus 1 is the first one, and X plus 4 is the second one. So I want to get my third factor. So we have to do the third factor by inspection. But now notice here I've got a 2. So I already have X times X times what will give me a 2X cubed. So I have to first of all now sort out the term in X. So that's 2X cubed. I already have a X times a X. So X times X times what will be 2X cubed. That's right, just a 2x. So I need a 2x there. Now I sort out my constant. I have negative 20. I already have a 1 and a 4, a negative 1 and a 4. Negative 1 times 4 times what will give me a positive, a negative 20? And that value there is a positive 5. And there I've got my third factor here, right? There I've got an x and an x, but because I had a 2x, my third factor will have a 2x. So let's just check whether this is uh, correct. Let's go to the original expression. So I have 2 plus 11 plus 7 subtract 20 gives me 0. If I substitute, if I use the four um, factors, I get 1 minus 1 times 1 plus 4 times 2 plus 5, also 0. So those are the three distinct, the three different factors of this cubic polynomial. Here again, I have a leading coefficient of 5, and I have my constant of 6. So we're going to follow exactly the same. Find two factors using the factor theorem, and then we'll find the third factor by means of inspection. So first of all, we need to get the factors of 6. That's not so many factors. So it's from plus or minus 1 up to plus or minus 6. Let's try F1. Oh, well, again, lucky that it works. So I have x minus 1 as a factor. Negative 1 doesn't work. Try 2, 2 doesn't work. Let's try negative 2, and that worked. So now I have x plus 2 as a factor. So now I've got my two factors, x minus 1 and x plus 2. So to get my third factor, I'll do this by inspection. Let's start with the leading coefficient here again, 5x cubed. Already I have an x and an x. So I have 5x cubed, I already have x times x, x times x times what will give me my 5x cubed? That's correct, it will be a 5x, so I've insert 5x. Let's sort out the constant, the constant is 6. I already have negative 1 and 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 times what will be 6? That's correct, negative 3. So over there I have my third factor being 5x minus Let's check it again. Let's take my polynomial. So that's 5 plus 2 minus 13 plus 6, which gives me 0. I take my factors. It's 1 minus 1 times 1 plus 2 times 5 minus 3, also giving me 0. Okay. So we can see here, uh, if I have an x and an x, and because I have a 5x, my one factor must contain a 5x. So it's not much different to the one where we only had a leading coefficient of Another one, I've got 3x cubed minus 10x squared plus 4x plus 8, constant of 8 and a coefficient of x cubed of 3. Same procedure, first two factors using the factor theorem, and then the third factor by means of inspection. Let's try now. All the possible factors of 8, from plus or minus 1 up to plus or minus. If plus or minus 1, we try both of them, don't give me a 0. I try minus 2, it doesn't give me a 0. I try 2, and there I get my first factor, x minus 2 there. And now I keep on trying. f plus or minus 4, 
doesn't give me a zero. F plus or minus eight. So where is the second factor? So after that, if I use the plus or minus four, I still don't get a second factor. What does this indicate to me? It indicates to me that that x minus two is repeated. So I've got x minus two squared will be a factor or x minus 2 times x minus 2, I've got equal factors, x minus 2 and another x minus 2. So my first factor is x minus 2, and my second factor is also x minus 2. I want to get the third one, you can do this by inspection now. Let's sort out the term in terms of x, I've got 3x cubed, so I've got 3x cubed, I already have an x and an x, so I just need a 3x there. Let's look at the constant, I've got an 8, I already have a negative 2 and a negative 2. So negative 2 times negative 2 times what will give me a 8. And that gives me a positive 2. So I insert the positive 2 there. And there I've got my 3. But in just in this case, I don't, I don't have 3. I only have 2 distinct because these two are the same. So I've got 2 distinct factors here. I can check that again. 3 minus 10 plus 4 plus 8 equal to 5, and if I use my factors, 1 minus 2 times 1 minus 2 times 3 plus 2 also gives me a 5, right? So sometimes when you only have 1, then, we have, then that would imply that one that factor would be, there'll be another one equal to it, or you can just write it as x minus 2 squared. Uh, 6 cubic for you to factorize using this approach I showed you, using the factor theorem for two factors, and getting the third factor by means of inspection. In the next slide will show you the solutions to this, solutions to the factors of these three cubic uh, expressions. As you can see there, there I've got three distinct, there's three distinct, but here I've got a repeated factor. There I've got three distinct, there I've got three distinct, and here's an example with a repeated fact. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you have enjoyed this uh, lesson on factorizing cubic using the factor theorem. I also have other videos on factorizing uh, cubic polynomials, and uh, some of the methods are using a calculator, and others can be totally by means of inspection, not using the factor theorem at all. I really suggest you also watch those videos and you can see which method is best suitable to you. And I also have other videos on mathematics topics on the um, Maths with Armin uh, channel, my channel Maths with Armin. And please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. I hope you've enjoyed this and watch my other videos as well. Thank you.